If you have a little bit of time, I can pay my uh, duty to Philibert, Philibert de Lorme now, whom I should have presented a few days ago when was his birthday, but only one person showed up. And if still there are a few people here, but even, even if there is no one here, I will still make this presentation because I, I, I need to, to, to uh, feel less guilty vis-a-vis -vis Philibert Delorme. Plus, there is something else. I presented two British men and uh, we need someone from France. Earlier, 1514, 1570, Philibert Delorme, truly a remarkable, remarkable architect, so very good that Francois Premier a great king in France appreciated him so much and, uh, and, and, and commissioned him. The same Francois Premier who invited Leonardo da Vinci uh, to, to be an artist in residence uh, in France. Very, very nice. Philibert de Lorme, born in 1514 and uh, died in 1570. So the 8th of January was a French architect and writer and one of the great masters of French Renaissance architecture. His surname is also written De Lorme, De Lorme, or De Lorme. The pronunciation is the same, but the, by the, the specificities of the word are a little bit different. This was, uh, this, he became a statue himself. I mean, you know, this is the destiny for the great people of the world to become statues. What can we do? <laughs> Philibert De Lorme. Uh, a few uh, of his constructions. This is an engraving showing Philibert. Uh, he was, uh, look at his signature. I isn't it magnificent? Who would, sign, who would sign today like this? It's a small artwork in itself. And it seems he had hesitations. I don't know, I see some, I don't know exactly what it is. I see above Philibert the Lord, but what is below? Uh, mysterious. He was an alchemist. He was a crazy man. He was an uh, exotic intellectual, uh, refined spirit, a man of uh, very fine taste and uh, eccentric, and uh, eccentric, uh, uh, you know, escapades into the world of spirit drawings. His drawings. He 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 was uh, um, um, very very interested in. Uh, in, uh, in um, you know, special uh, stone uh, configurations and uh, uh, he, b because he was also very good at mathematics, uh, he was able to, to, to do such drawings. Look at them. He has books. There are books by Philibert de Lorme, which, which should be known by, by all of us. The abstract art of architecture finds in Philibert de Lorme a great, uh, a great, um, you know, uh, soldier, so to speak. You know, uh, I think even if we do not have commissions and we do not have clients, no one can can interdict us the great pleasure of innovating by working within geometry and uh, you know envisioning uh, various uh, uh, forms of doing architecture. It's very possible. And maybe publish a book one day if we are to cut down more trees in order to publish books. Or we can present our work on a Zoom, uh, on the Zoom platform, which became so fashionable these days. He was obviously interested in how things were made or are made. And, uh, and uh, I think in this sense, he was both an architect and, and, and a constructor, a builder. Uh, he invented the uh, uh, charpent. You see the prince, principe de, de la charpente dit à la Philibert de Lorme. Du, uh, uh, du nom de cet architecte, arbaletier, courbe composé de deux cours de planche et de taille d'assemblage par uh, Tienne uh, Clafté. Anyway, uh, um, I like this fact that a very, very sophisticated uh, intellectual was also uh, a very uh, rigorous uh, structuralist in a way, but his structures are, are, are complex, they are not simplistic. And these drawings, uh, uh, you know, show clearly that it was an intellectual pursuit, uh, very pure and poetical, although rigorous and, and, and uh, attached to the idea to become concrete. And you will see some of his uh, uh, inventions, so to speak, uh, 
brought to reality, meaning to being built. Philibert de Lorme. I like the drawings. The, the drawings, I, I, I do not understand them at the first sight, but they are almost modern now. Uh, they, are, they are inciting for the eye and for the spirit. A very interesting architect. Chateau de saint More. More. Uh, a very interesting, this was, I think, uh, either demolished, this is a digital reconstruction based on the, on, on the project or on the drawing. Uh, we are talking about the 16th century here. Um, so um, Michelangelo was still alive when Philibert de, Philibert de Lorme was, uh, was uh, you know, uh, alive and working. Uh, the, the tomb, the tomb of, uh, of Francois the uh, first in the Basilica of Saint Denis in Paris uh, from 1547. Again, truly a great king. Francois Premier was a great king, uh, very very open to culture and to to he encouraged uh, important uh, artists, architects. Uh, he invited them to his palace. We need such uh, leaders. Ah, today, by the way, I, I read that uh, Joe Biden, uh, the new president of the United States, was, I quote, an unexceptional student. Like he was the 78th from out of 83 or 85 students in his class. And uh, at other times he was described as a poor student. So I am saying this because, you know, those uh, of us uh, who are not necessarily brilliant students could still make it to become the presidents of, uh, you know, of a certain uh, certain countries, and uh, so this is this is I think good news. Now, if President Joe Biden, being an unexceptional student, became the president of of such a, an important country as the United States, then you know the sky is the limit for all of us, and it's not the only example. After all, all those grades and so on are truly irrelevant. You know, uh, what about uh, you know the the great uh, innovators in technology or uh, in uh, being entrepreneurs? You know, from Bill Gates to Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs also, and even Bill Gates. They all they didn't finish their studies, you know, and and they then they built in, built in by empires not that i advocate building empires but what i'm saying is between good grades and great achievements is a long distance those good grades mean almost nothing i'm not saying that always this is the case sometimes someone with good grades also builds an empire or i don't know becomes a president yes other times not Anyway, I'm very happy that there is a new president now in the United States, and I, I, I have a good feeling about, about him and about uh, the vice president and about, uh, I think, uh, a positive change will occur. Okay. Uh, I watched yesterday the inauguration uh, in Washington, and it, it was impressive. I, I was at, at times uh, emotional. Even Lady Gaga participated and sang. That girl, that not sorry, that that singer, that woman now has an unbelievable voice. That's the truth. Uh, anyway, I, I feel good that I launched many years ago uh, the competition, a house for Lady Gaga, and last year a house for not Lady Gaga, meaning Lady Gaga in that movie where she played with that handsome man. And she was without makeup, because you know by now that I don't like makeup in general. Anyway, enough, enough with Lady Gaga and, uh, and the new president. We are back to uh, uh, Philibert de Lorme, and he has truly a very nice name, Philibert de Lorme. I mean, really, this is the name of an architect, not like Dan Coma, my God. No, I don't have the name of an architect, but, or, uh, uh, but Philibert de Lorme, yes. It, 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 it does have a, a distinctive uh, name, which I like very much. So this is at Saint-Denis, and I, I was with a group of students from the university here, just 10 minutes walking from Saint-Denis, and we never visited it. Shame to us. I knew nothing at that, at that time about 
the work of Philibert Delon here. Uh, I knew of Saint Denis, but I didn't search for it, and I should have. It was very, very close to where we lived. Anyway, maybe the next time, if the pandemic goes away, Chateau d'Anet, built for Diane de Poitiers, only one wing remains. This is the destiny of, uh, of architecture, unfortunately. But look, even as a ruin, it's splendid. It's romantic, it's complex, it's eclectic. Look at that uh, proud animal at the top. And uh, it's very, very nice, I think. I mean, I, I don't know how it was when it was a, it was a hole, but as a ruin, it's, it's I think, magnificent. And uh, I mean, this is more than 400 years old, 450 years old. Not bad. Bravo, Philibert. Very nice work. Who cares? It's uh, partly ruined. It's fine. For the spirit is enough. <laughs> Look here at the top. You know, who do something like this today? And my question is, why not? Why don't we do this any longer? You know? Why? I, I really think our job became so boring, you know, so predictable. We only care about parking lots and uh, all kinds of regulations. And uh, but we, we lost something of the soul of architecture. Or I am just unacceptably uh, nostalgic. That is possible too. But don't look at this incredible dome. I mean, come on, you know. Architecture is inevitably attracted to the task of creating beauty. It has to. And, uh, you know, such complexities, there was no parameter there. There was no uh, computer. Uh, this was done with uh, human calculations, with mathematics, with a pencil and a piece of paper, and with labor, the labor of the hands. But look what they created. And even the, the, the floor. You know, the, the, this floor is in itself an artwork. It has complexity. It has uh, uh, mathematics, geometry. Is, it has maybe probably even symbolism. I don't know what's going on in the center there, but it's possible there is a, a story told there of maybe astrology or I don't know. Uh, and look, the, what is below is above, in a way. There is a mirror, mirroring between the, 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 the top part of the building and the bottom part of the building. So the celestial and the terrestrial have a dialogue, as they should. Do we think about this uh, any longer? Very rarely. It's true, this is a sacred space. It's a church, probably. But uh, there is a magnificent... Uh, uh, cupola uh, dome and it, it's it, it's it's based on the circle but there we see the contortions of the ellipse and it's it's a vortex dynamic and static at the same time or stable i shouldn't use the word static very nice work bravo philibert de Lorme. we are happy that you gave us the chance to talk a, a little bit about you you deserve more of course Maybe next year when, uh, when your birthday will be. Uh, anyway, for the people who passed away, we, we have two celebrations, the day of birth and the day when the one we talk about died. Uh, very fine uh, flooring and, and very fine uh, ceiling. It's, it's complexity here. But not the complexity that Venturi uh, wrote about in uh, learning from Las Vegas. Because in my opinion, there isn't so, really so much to learn from Las Vegas. It's, it's a space, a space of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, unreality. Uh, here, uh, I wouldn't say it is that. Attribution du Chateau d'Aquini, uh, it is attributed to him. It's not for sure his. But, um, you know, the experts attributed it to him. It's not perhaps very well kept, but still make some impressive uh, images for the photograph, photographer. Uh, and uh, no, no, uh, truly, I, I, I admire uh, my intuition about Philibert de Lorme is, is, uh, is high. I have high esteem for him. Completion of Saint-Chapelle at Le Chateau 
the Chateau of the Vincennes, the Vincennes from 1552, so 400, uh, almost 470 years ago. Uh, yeah. How different, no? The, 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 the architectonic spirit, uh, well, it's true, this is earlier, this is not 19th century like we saw in John Nash and uh, John Stone. This is, uh, you know, with uh, 300 years almost earlier. Uh, and uh, it was Renaissance here. Philibert de Lorme is one of the most famous uh, Renaissance architects in France, if not the most famous. We don't know so much about Renaissance uh, uh, artists and architects in France because we are so seduced by the, the Italian Renaissance that we forgot that there was Renaissance also in other countries and uh, not without its accomplishments. Uh, by saying this, I'm not trying in any way to diminish the great, great, great Italian Renaissance. It's just that Italian Renaissance, uh, French Renaissance, also had some some very fine uh, accomplishments, not just in architecture, but in uh, other fields of culture and art. And let us not forget again, the Gothic in, in, in France is sublime. The Gothic, the French Gothic cathedrals are, uh, are probably the best. And I'm not referring only to Chartres, but also to Amiens, Rouen, Reims, Beauvais. They are splendid. Chapelle of the Chateau of Vivière, uh, Cotter, Cotteret. Uh, uh, sorry about this uh, small uh, resolution, but still I hope, I, I hope, I hope I'm able to stir up both you and myself to continue to to, to investigate the work of this very important uh, uh, French uh, intellect and, and, and architect. We need badly, I think, the return of the architect as a cultural figure, with the dignity of a cultural figure, and, and to, to, to diminish as much as possible the, the servilities to which we are uh, often uh, obliged to conform in the name of uh, uh, so-called uh, serving the market. No, no, uh, the architect is supposed to have a dignity that is comfort to him because of the difficult uh, educational process and the difficulty to be both an artist and something else, maybe a scientist, a mathematician, and to know many things. That dignity should not be uh, allowed to be uh, uh, you know, uh, killed, uh, destroyed in the mud of, uh, of uh, commercialism. No, that's why we need examples like Philibert de Lorme and others, and even, yes, John Nash and, uh, and uh, John Sohn. The architect is a cultural figure. That's what we need. Nice works. Even the children seem to be, uh, you know, uh, enamored of, 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 of this, uh, of this uh, room. Because beauty does, uh, maybe Dostoevsky was right, beauty will save the world. Maybe beauty, did we think of actually, uh, uh, um, yeah, killing the virus with beauty? Not with a, not, not with a vaccine, but with beauty. I know what I'm saying is perhaps totally irrational, but what if we oppose to the pandemic an unbelievable beauty? If we, uh, the humans attacked by the pandemic, respond to it with an incredible idealism and begin to build and, and, and uh, imagine a world where the beauty is, is uh, of, 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 uh, of great concern to us. Chateau de Medon. Again, attributed, uh, sorry, it's just an engraving, but here is not an engraving, but the resolution of the picture is not uh, good, but you still see a, 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 a great chateau. Uh, another one, Chateau de Monceau. Uh, there were, of course, uh, changes in time, uh, damages and so on. This is just uh, ruin now, but even as a ruin, 
I don't know, the ruin is uh, some kind of a conjunction, a ring of conjunction between, uh, between the present and, uh, and the, what we call the past. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I think these ruins are not uh, futile. No, not at all. Um, I actually think they are beautiful. Uh, maybe Louis Kahn was right when he said a ruin tells you how a, tell, tells you how a thing is, is, was done, was built. But it's more than that, that lucrative uh, quality of a, of a ruin. It's about the passage of time, it's about being on the spiral of time connected with other times, with other places. Uh, ruins are, uh, and the ruin is the future actually for all of us, including for our buildings. So what we see in the past is the future, our future. Chateau de Toiry. Now, this is a very interesting work. And I will say in a few words why it's very interesting. Apparently, it was, I hope I have some text here. You see, Au Chateau de Toiry, celebra Celebration du Solstice d'été. It seems that uh, the summer solstice, and the building was intentionally done so, uh, you have the, the sun, I forgot, at, in the morning or in the evening, exactly in the axis of, of, of the building. And the sunlight enters through the building. Uh, you see here, but uh, I hope I look here. It's, it's, it's a building that apparently was built. I should have had a text, um, but I, I, I will tell you what I read. It was built for, for someone who had a lot of knowledge about um, astrological and astronomical matters and uh, who also had a mystical side. And so the architect responded to this by creating a building which uh, at, at certain times, in this case, the summer solstice, the, the, the sun, I forgot and I should have known, but I knew on the 8th of January when I, when I prepared this material, but I forgot. I think it is the, the sunrise uh, or the sunset Anyway, either the sunrise or the sunset or the summer solstice, as you can see, the, the sun rays enter through the building exactly through the door. Uh, and uh, uh, this was not just an accident. Uh, uh, you know, it happened that um, other structures, especially in ancient civilizations, but in the Renaissance, as far as I know, and I searched a little bit, uh, this is a unique building. Look at it, it is inflamed by the, by the sunlight. I, and, the, and there are gatherings here, just as there are gatherings at Stonehenge or uh, at, uh, at um, certain monuments uh, in, uh, in Mexico, that, that, that there are gatherings of people here who wait for this magical moment when there is this conjunction between the intention the intention of the architect and the, the 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 movement of the sun on the sky and this makes you less alone I, I would say it is very very important to feel less alone to feel connected as uh, Vincent Scully who wrote an article about uh, his friend uh, Louis Kahn uh, he placed on top of the article um, the, the, the two lines, uh, now in fact two words from uh, a British uh, uh, important writer, Froster, only connect, only connect. So through this building, Philibert de Lorme and his client, the, the man who all, you know, commissioned him for this building, created this possibility to feel, feel united even for us from far away and looking uh, on Zoom uh, at the screen to feel connected with the sun and with a significant moment on the evolution, the trajectory of the sun on, on, on the sky at, at the summer solstice. You see, Le Chateau de Toiry present uh, the 20th of June, 2000, La Fête du Solstice. Yes, the, the celebration of the solstice. Very, very nice. And even the birds seem to um, enjoy it somehow when they fly above the building. It, it might be that it is at the, the sunrise. 
Or at the sunset, I still can decide, but maybe someone who is more calm than me and more lucid uh, can uh, respond to this. Uh, bravo again to Philibert Delorme. Ah, maybe we, here we have the answer. Le Chateau, uh, the castle is a pivot of the solar uh, calendar. Uh, I am trying to translate it. I hope I have. Uh, Lux de coucher du soleil project coucher means to go down. On the spot de triangle de Pythagore, dans les hypotenuses communes sont l'axe du pôle sud, celui de la rot rotation de la Terre. This connection between the Earth and the sky, in this case through the, through the Sun, is very, very important. And see le château, temple solaire. It is a solar uh, temple, this house, this castle. Le phénomène astronomique pour, par le pouvoir de l'esprit exprimé par la géométrie sacrée. So you understood, it's about uh, uh, an, an essay on uh, sacred geometry, le nombre d'or, the, the gold uh, uh, number, the gold section, et les fréquences, fréquences musicales ordonnent les proportions de l'architecture du monument construit en 1559 par le célèbre architecte Philibert Delorme pour un érudit. So it was, it was built for a man who was uh, very cultured. He had erudition, uh, if there is such a word in English, eruditia in Romanian, uh, so esoterical knowledge uh, on an exceptional site where the solstices were um, a celebrity for 5,000 years. Anyway. Um, The core Philibert Delorme uh, will, will end soon. Please be kind and turn off the microphone. Uh, another, he was actually born in Lyon, and this is, uh, this is uh, um, uh, a work in Lyon. Uh, so in the late 15th century, uh, this set of buildings belonged to the Lyon uh, family. In the second courtyard, we discover an architectural gem. The gallery on squinches built by a young Lyonnais architect later to become the ar architect uh, royal, the architect royal, Philibert Delorme on his return from Rome. This open gallery is decorated in the antique style and, uh, and adorned on the inside with paintings and inscriptions. Two curbed turrets on squinches support each corner of the gallery. This uh, treatise, uh, Philibert Delorme's treatise of architecture, his book presents this gallery as an architectural feat. Now it looks like, you know, with mold and the passage of time and, and some dirt, it's okay. It still has the nobility of the spirit and, uh, and uh, it moves one with, uh, with its uh, age. I mean, you know, it's almost 500 years old. It's, it's apparently not something very impressive, but uh, if you look more carefully at it and you allow yourself to feel it, you understand that after all, you know, there were human beings just like us, you know, wandering through these spaces and living there and so on in the work of the young Lyon architect Philibert Delorme. Well, what is above, of course, is from a different time, but the bottom, you know, the first two, three floors were by him. The bridge upon which the Chateau de Chenonceau is constructed. So he, he had this major role to, to build a bridge on which this very important uh, castle, Chenonceau, was, was constructed. So here it is in all its splendor. Uh, he built just the bridge, but... Uh, <laughs> I would build such a bridge at any time if such a castle or, uh, you know, a beautiful building would, would be built upon it. Very nice, uh, Philibert Delorme. Again, I, I, I know it sounds crazy, but what, why can't we oppose the physical and the suffering, the physical suffering with metaphysical beauty? That's what I suggested in an exuberant and maybe rational way to try to oppose uh, the virus with culture, with beauty. Sorry, uh, I don't know what happened here. Uh, uh, there are a few more images with this uh, work by, so this is a famous uh, chateau by, uh, I don't know who built it, Chenonceau, but uh, now we know that the base was built by Philibert Delorme, and that's not a little thing. 
portions of the Louvre. He also worked for the Louvre, but it's not very clear. I searched, it wasn't very clear to, for me what, what he exactly he did. This is uh, uh, the portions of the, you know, that's how he, uh, people work then. You know, the building lasted for many years. Chateau de Saint-Germain-en-Laye, uh, another great uh, chateau, castle. This one, French and not uh, like the ones which we saw by uh, John Nash and, uh, and uh, John Soane, but quite impressive and quite large. I knew nothing about this, this building until I prepared this material about uh, Philibert Delorme. Portal of Chateau de Quern, now the National Museum of the French Renaissance, mid 16th century. The wing he designed was destroyed in 1787, but vestiges are displayed inside the chateau. Um, so this, is, this was not built by him, but some fragments are to be seen inside. What can we do? The passage of time could be indeed uh, cruel. Uh, roofs of the towers of the Chateau de Bonmar. Uh, here is about the Charpent that he became famous for, and uh, apparently it is called uh, Philibert de Lorme, uh, with two um, two curved uh, portions of the of the Charpent. Uh, I don't know the technical intricacies of this, but. Uh, uh, what I see, I like. It's the act of construction. I see a French Brunelleschi in a way here, uh, where the structure is not is 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 not saying no to <clears throat> to beauty and rigor is not uh, eliminating uh, grace. So um, I I, uh, I I think if structure would be like this today as well, it would be very very nice that is sensitive structures. And uh, we are approaching the end. We see an approximate portrait of Philibert Delorme in the lower left corner. Thank you very much. And thank you for the patience.